Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and I've got another sound design tutorial here for you today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create what I like to call a synth siren pitch riser or fall effect. And you can do this with virtually any software instrument that has pitch shift and can pitch shift multiple octaves. So let me show you an example of what I'm talking about and then I'll show you how to recreate this effect. So I've got an electronic track here I'm working on. Right here at bar 104, there's like sort of a piano break. This is in the key of E minor. And then at 113, there's a buildup that just immediately jumps up to F sharp minor. So it's an un completely unprepared modulation. And then at bar 129, the beat kicks in, like the main beat kicks in. What I've done is I've added a pitch riser here leading up to the key change to accent that key change. And then a sort of siren falling effect here just as a special effect. So let me play the effect and then I'll show you how to recreate this. With that synth riser and fall effect, the important thing is that the pitch rises up and lands on a specific pitch that matches the root or the key of the song. And then when you use a fall effect, like a siren fall effect over here, eventually the pitch needs to land on the correct note as well. And so this really helps to just tie in these different sections. Um, it just creates a cool effect uh, in, in general, I think. So... I'm gonna just mute this one and I'm just gonna start completely from scratch. Now, what I recommend you do is create a software instrument and I recommend using the ES2. Now, the ES2 is an old synth, but it's a, an, still an amazing synth. I still use it all the time. You can basically use any synth lead preset you want, but I liked using the hammer lead because it's got a bit of uh, grit to it if you hold the note for a while. Almost sounds like, a, I don't know, an electronic didgeridoo or something. So I really love this patch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bend range here, and you can customize what the pitch bend range is up to 36 semitones. So that's three octaves. So that's one of the reasons why I really like doing this with the ES2 is because the pitch effect, the, the pitch rising and falling effect comes from the pitch bend because we're going to write in pitch bend automation. Now, I know some people will say in the comments, well, why not use the Apple AU pitch uh, plugin and or use a pitch shifting plugin? The problem with pitch shifters is you're pitch shifting the audio signal. Here, we're pitch shifting the MIDI signal before it even gets to the oscillator. So you're going to get the cleanest pitch shift possible. So that's why I like doing it this way. Now, you can customize the parameters any way you like. I like pulling up the voices here in unison mode. It creates a really nice effect. I may pull out the uh, cutoff frequency here a bit. And then what you got to do is you just have to create a note. So what I'm going to do here is at my transition from E minor into F or F sharp minor, I'm going to create just a long note starting here at bar 11. And what did I do for this one? I did F sharp two. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'll do F sharp two. There we go. So right now, this is just going to, you know, play that note. You'll hear all the modulation. Okay, so that probably is pretty harsh on the ears. What we need to do is we need to write in pitch bend automation. So I'm going to write in a pitch bend automation from 111 to 113. So again, the way you do this is you just open up the piano roll editor, click here. This will open up your MIDI automation. And then right here, you can change this from note velocity to pitch bend. Now, 
One of the other reasons why I really enjoy doing this with Pitch Bend rather than a pitch shift plugin is that the resolution of Pitch Bend is actually extremely high. It's like a double layered MIDI message. So the the actual like range of like the number of values you get is in the thousands. So even though this is showing zero to 63, the range of modulation is in the thousands. So you're gonna get a super smooth pitch, uh, pitch bend this way. So basically what we have here is just a pitch bend that's gonna rise up and it's gonna go up three octaves over these two bars. Okay, I don't wanna kill your ears anymore. Uh, but what you can do at this point is you can add whatever effects you want to this. Now, I really like the Valhalla Shimmer plugin. For ambience, I would basically use whatever like long ambient ethereal reverb you prefer. But my one of my favorite uh, plugins, one of my favorite reverb plugins for sound design is Valhalla Shimmer. It's like 50 bucks. This is not sponsored by any means, but, but I can't speak the praises of this plugin uh, more than I already am here. So I've got Valhalla Shimmer on here. I'm using mostly a wet mix with a little bit of dry. Uh, and let's see what this sounds like now. last step is to draw in some automation for volume. And I'm just going to mimic the, vo uh, the volume automation I have down here on this other track. And what that's going to do is it's going to fade that reverb tail. In fact, maybe I want it a little bit sooner. You know, let's go ahead and do the, the siren fall effect over here. If you just drag this over, really all we need to do at this point is maybe back up the automation a little bit. And then we need to make the pitch bend start high and sort of fall down rather than ramp up. And so another thing I'm gonna show you here is that you can create different curves for your pitch bend. So if I want the pitch bend to start way up here, and then um, I'm actually gonna pull it down to zero there. I found sometimes if you start on a high value, it can mess up the pitch bend of like the next region over. So I'll start at zero, ramp it up before the note comes in. So it's this note's gonna be up three octaves and then what we're gonna do is from here to here, we're gonna ramp this down to zero. And the thing about pitch bend you gotta remember is it's a bi-directional controller. So if you go down, it's gonna pitch shift down, but you can play around with that too. I mean, that's totally an option. Uh, let me see how I'm matching. So in my other one, I pulled this in a little bit closer. Let's try that. Now you see how I have this curve here. If you use your automation curve tool, you can drag up or down for logarithmic or exponential curves or drag left and right for these different S curves. And I kind of like this because it starts on that F sharp. It kind of stays there, slowly drifts down, and then all of a sudden drops down to the low F sharp. So let's see what that sounds like. It should sound fairly similar to the example I played you earlier. And you can play around with the curve, you can play around with the start and end points, and you'll get a different result every single time. You can try out different reverbs, you can try out different instruments. So this is a really neat way to create pitch riser and falling effects without having to resort to samples. You can just create them yourself, render them or print them as audio or bounce in place, and then you have your own custom sample that you've made that no one else has. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.